Hello and welcome to a River Communications Group podcast. This is Steve Lubetkin welcoming you to another presentation from the River Communications Group on the web at rivercommunicationsgroup.com. In this program, we present Peter Shankman, the president and CEO of geekfactory.com, in a presentation held on May 12, 2008, in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Peter's also the author of Can We Do That? Outrageous PR Stunts That Work and Why Your Company Needs Them. Now let's join Beth Brody of River Communications Group as she introduces Peter. My name is Beth Brody and I'd like to welcome you to the River Communications Group meeting. Before I introduce the speaker, I just have a couple of announcements. First, I'd like to thank Chad Lang for designing and maintaining the River Communications website. Um, if you want to have your website linked to rivercommunicationsgroup.com, it costs $36 a year, and you can let Chad know if you're interested in a link. Marilyn Bullock has been hosting the website for the past few years at no charge, and uh, Samantha Beatty from Schoolhouse Communications has agreed to take over the hosting for us, and I want to thank her. She's not here tonight. I'd also like to thank Steve Lubetkin for taping our presentation this evening and for picking Peter Shankman up at the train station. And Marsha Brown, Marsha Brown's restaurant was uh, kind enough to close the restaurant for us tonight and um, until seven o'clock. So we're going to save our door prizes till afterwards when we move down to the bar area. Our guest speaker, Peter Shankman, is CEO of the Geek Factory, a marketing and PR strategy firm located in New York City. He also publishes Help a Reporter Out, a free service which helps reporters find sources for their stories and helps publicists get coverage for their clients. He has over four, well, he has over 8,000 subscribers. And not only do we like getting the heads up when a reporter is writing a story, we enjoy reading about Peter's skydiving experiences, his injuries, and travels to meet with groups like ours. It's a great example of social networking. I'm sure he'll be telling his subscribers in tomorrow's issue that tonight was the most fun he's had in ages. Please join me in welcoming Peter. <clears throat> most fun I've had in ages, no doubt. I'm shutting off my phone. If you don't do the same and it rings, I get to answer it. Um, thank you, uh, Beth and Steve, and everyone who had a hand in getting me here. Um, and and, and, and we're, in a we're in a church, so that was a higher, that was a higher. Um, okay, so why are you all here listening to me? You're all here listening to me because I'm supposedly some brilliant uh, knowledge on social media and social marketing and uh, social networking. And, and you're going to leave here and you're all going to become expert networkers. Um, and, and, and everything you do is going to change and your, your entire life is going to uh, become better. Um, if you suck at networking to begin with, this won't do anything for you. <laughs> Let's just sort of, sort of clear that up right now. I, I, I equate it to, um, you know, my, my dad um, was never really big into carpentry or anything like that, but every once in a while he'd get, he'd get sort of an idea. And, and so he'd go out and he'd buy the, the biggest, the best saw or the best, you know, electric drill bit or whatever that Sears sold. And he still couldn't build crap. You know, and so he owned the greatest thing known to man, but if he didn't know how to use it, it didn't really matter that he'd gone out and bought it. And so it sat in the corner for years and was never used. That's kind of what, where we are with, with, with this world of social media. Um, I'm going to give you a 15-second background on who I am and, and, and why you're listening to me. Then we're going to get into it. Um, I, run, I run several companies. I, uh, I, I was dropped in my head several times as a child, and, and it resulted in very, very bad ADHD, um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Because attention deficit order, when, when that's just not enough, they throw in the hyperactive stuff, and then, it just, then, it, then it's just a party. Um, so basically, it means that I, I have very, very low um, MAO inhibitors. Uh, MAO inhibitors are what allow you all to sit there and, and calmly sit there and actually focus on me. I can't do that. Um, so I'm usually focusing on, on 30 or 40 or 50 other things at a time. I've been very fortunate that when I was growing up, they just called it hyperactivity and told me to shut up. Um, they sat me in a corner and I got yelled at by the teachers, but they never actually had meds for it. Because if I was on meds, I guarantee you I wouldn't be anywhere near what I'm doing what I do now. I'd just be very chill and sad. Um, so, so I sort of learned at, a, at an early age that you could do 30 or 40 or 50 things at a time, which is why I can Blackberry and talk on my cell phone and talk to you and drive and all at the same time. Um, so, you know, what does that mean? We live in a society today where you're kind of expected to do that. 
And, and when you don't do that, you know, people sort of sort of, oh, well, you're, you're behind the curve, you know, you're not, you're not up with the, 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 the today's technology. Um, I started my career, um, I was in grad school studying fashion and portrait photography because taking pictures of women was a great way to meet them. Um, and, and, and I lost my financial aid. The government sent my parents, sent me a letter that said, your parents make too much money, we're taking away your financial aid. And I sent the government, sent the government back a letter. Now mind you, I'm in, I'm in Santa Barbara, California shooting photos on a beach. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm what, 21 years old? This is heaven for me. You know, and I, all of a sudden I have no money, I lose my financial aid. And so the government sends me a letter, you know, your parents make too much money, we're taking away your financial aid. And I sent the government back a letter and said, you know, they, they, your government, my parents do make too much money, however they, however they keep it. Um, <laughs> and, and the government didn't buy it and I was moving back home. And in, in this random twist of fate, and, and everything you learn tonight is all about random twist of fate, because that's, that's basically how everything happens, is through some random twist of fate. I'm hanging out in the, um, and it's nice, I'm actually talking to an audience that's old enough to appreciate this. I'm hanging out in the Melrose Place TV gossip chat room. Okay, and I could say that because this was like 95, 96, and you say that, you know, you say that now, and people are like, and you look at me and go, it's like the hills, you know. So, yeah, I was, I'm hanging out in the chat room, and um, uh, I meet someone who's, who's started, who's, she says, hey, my company's trying to start this newsroom, um, why don't you submit your resume? And I thought, okay, I have no experience, I'm sure you're going to go out of your way to, to hire me. And two weeks later, I was being moved down to Virginia to help launch the America Online Newsroom. Um, and so it sort of became that, wow, I met this woman I'd never met before in a chat room. Didn't know, for that matter, if she was even a woman. Um, and, you know, she took my resume, and two weeks later, I was like, so hey, this, this crap works. Went down to Virginia, launched the AOL Newsroom for about two and a half years, best, best experience of my life. Left, came back to New York, was living in Manhattan. Basically, my two and a half years at AOL were, were all about explaining to other people what online was. You know, because we, we, we'd apply for press credentials to cover the Democratic and Republican conventions. And uh, senators and senators' aides would look at us and go, you know, I use AOL to download pictures of Pamela Anderson. What the hell do you need news credentials for? And, and so we had to explain what that was, and it became all about PR. And so when I came back to New York, I thought, okay, start an agency. It's, it's right around the time of the dot-com starting, and it, that, you should do that, because you talk a lot faster than all these old-school agencies, and you move a lot faster, you could probably get a lot of these new dot-com clients. I had no money. Um, so, again, and this is, this is sort of the, the second part of this talk, it's about social media and it's about thinking differently. Um, it was around the time that the movie Titanic was coming out on video. I don't know, it's, you probably haven't heard of it, it was a small little independent film about a boat. Um, it came out on video and everywhere you looked you saw a sign that said, buy Titanic on video, buy Titanic on video. So, uh, on a whim, I took my rent money and I had 500 t-shirts printed up and the t-shirts read, it sank, get over it. <laughs> and I went into Times Square and I figured if I could sell 180 shirts at $10 a piece, I'd break even. And I figured I'd make, you know, I don't know, I think I'd make uh, $1,800 to get my rent money back, right? And that's all I really wanted to do, because that really was my rent money, and I would really have been screwed. Um, I took the risk, and I said, 500, I figured I'd sell 180 shirts, make 1,800 bucks, I figured it'd take a week. Okay. I sold 500 shirts in six hours. Um, yeah, I cleared five grand. I came home, threw the money up in the air, rolled around it naked. I'll give you a second to... <laughs> bleach your <laughs> bleach your ears out for that. Um, I called a reporter that I knew uh, who worked at USA Today and said, "Hey, I just did something really funny. I thought you'd get a kick out of this." I told her the story, and she said, "Oh my God, that's hysterical! You're selling the shirts online." And I went, "Of course, I'm selling the shirts online. That's why I called you." <laughs> Hold on, built the worst website known to man. I mean, the worst website known to man. I think that. Buy shirts click. It was like the, it was it was hideous. Two days later, I'm lying in bed, and there's a point to the story. I swear. Two days later, I'm lying in bed, and the, the, the hosting provider of my website calls me. It's about 6:45, 7 o'clock in the morning. Mr. Shank, started calling you. So early. like, uh, have you started advertising or something? I was like, no, it's seven in the morning. What the hell's wrong with you, sir? Normally, you get about 150 visitors a day to your website. You know, most of them are you. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Uh, sir, you've had over 37,000 unique visitors in the past two hours. You, you've taken down our first, second, and third primary servers. You're about to take down our fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, sir, we only have seven. Um, a story right on the front page of the life section of USA Today. Listed the website. Um, and, 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 you know, as I hang up the phone, trying to figure out what the hell's going on, um, the phone rings again. I answer it. Hello? Yeah, Peter, hey, this is Gary Delabate. I'm Howard Stern's producer. You got two minutes to talk to Howard about the shirts. We love it. We hated that fucking movie. Of course I do. Did a live Howard Stern interview. I mean, this just kept going and going and going. Long story short, USA Today is a media paper. The media reads it. Um, in just under two months, I sold a little over 10,000 shirts on the web at $15 a piece. 
uh, cleared about 100 grand and started my first PR company. My dad actually, at the time, was a high school principal. I had 10 of his students coming over every day and helping box up t-shirts. It was like P. Diddy's studio switch off apartment. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, long story short, what, what I always learn from these things, and, and more things that we'll talk about, you, you got to sort of take the risk, which leads into talking about social networking. How many of you work in companies where social media is the last thing that your, your, your boss or your, the powers that be or the purse strings or anyone would, would think is worth spending even one penny on? A lot of you, yeah. That, that's sort of where we are. Now, let me ask you this. Flashback 10 years ago, how many of you were told by bosses at the time, you, you, none of you really look old enough to have had bosses 10 years ago, but think about it. How many of you probably had those same bosses who 10 years ago probably said the same thing of, internet? I'm not spending a dollar on the internet. Who the hell is going to use things on? What the hell is online? Right? Back in 1995, I bought shankman.com. And my father said, $75? You, you don't even own anything. You, what are you going to do with it? You can't hold it? I mean, this is the man who also, when I asked him for $50 when I was 12 years old, said, $40? $30 is a lot of money. We need $20 for it. So, you know, it's, it's sort of, but, but P.S., um, there's a company in South Africa called Shankman Diamond, Diamond Mines. And every year, Shankman Diamond Mines offers me no less than $150,000 a year for Shankman.com. I've yet to sell it. Um, he's, he's since come around on a lot of things like that. We actually have a really good relationship because um, he realized I'm right. So this is the, the kind of industry we live in. Right now, we have a lot of people that don't get social media. They think social media, and if, if you talk to them for more than two seconds about it, they, that's my space. That's high school kids. I'm not doing that crap. All right. It was. But you know what? So is the internet, and so is basically anything online. Anything online starts out with high school and college kids. It's just because they have better access and they're quicker at this stuff. Um, social media, though, is not just high school and college kids anymore. Um, how many of you, and, I, and I'll give you a perfect example, how many of you believe that LinkedIn is like social media? One person. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? Almost all of you. How many of you think Facebook is like social, is social media? How many of you have a Facebook account? Very few of you. Why do you have Facebook? Why don't you have a Facebook account? Who, who has a LinkedIn account and not a Facebook account? Why do you have a LinkedIn account and not a Facebook account? My daughter's really horrified. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the only answer I ever accept. My, when, when my mother joined Facebook, because she's an NYU professor, it, it really, to this day, it still gives it leaves a very bad taste in my mouth. I don't want um, being on Facebook. But uh, how about someone else? Who else? Is a, why? Uh, there's a negative connotation that like, once you get in, you can't ever get out. I've never heard that one before. That's once you have a Facebook account, you can't ever get rid of it. I've just heard that. I've heard that about drugs. I've never actually heard that about. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, okay. That actually that leads into that leads into what we're going to talk about later, which is managing online reputation. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Why do you have a LinkedIn account, not a Facebook account? Okay. Have you? Has anyone ever gotten any business from LinkedIn? But Steve, you don't count. You get business from everyone. You don't count. So about three people. It doesn't seem to be about that much business. If about I'd say eighty percent of the room is is on it, and about three people have gotten. Problem with LinkedIn. Everyone thinks LinkedIn is is is, is all that business, and Facebook isn't. You know what? LinkedIn is your resume digitized. That's pretty much it. How many of you are recruiters? You are probably on LinkedIn 24 hours a day. You, li you live and die on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a dream. Right, okay? Because LinkedIn gives you 50,000 potential employees all in one place. And for you, it is the best thing known to man. Agreed. For everyone else, you should be on Facebook. And that'll bring us into the concept of what social media is. Like I said in the very beginning, if you suck at networking, no, no amount of social media is going to help you. What do I mean by sucking at networking? We live in a society that's very much me-centric. Okay, it's very much about what can I get out of this? I'm coming tonight to do something about this. I want to do this. I want to. Okay, we live in a society that is very lazy. It wasn't bad enough that we didn't want to make dinner, so we created fast food. Then we were too lazy to get off our asses and walk inside to get the fast food, so we created the drive-through. Okay, that's sort of the. We don't really have a high bar to go here, people. It's, it's you know, we're not really looking for that greatest success story here. The beauty of that, though, is you know, be one percent better than, than than the norm, and you, you pretty much own it. Um. The problem with Facebook and the problem with even LinkedIn to an exchange, and the problem with really any of those things, is that people think that when they get on it, it's immediately going to change their lives and, 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 and make everything better. The downside is, is that if you don't know how to use it, it it's not. Uh, if you don't know how to use a computer, it might look really, really pretty. I just made the switch from, from PC to Mac last week because Vista crashed on me just one too many times, and I just said, thank you. Yes. I'm actually very, very happy about that. <laughs> I don't know if I'll clap downstairs, but that's funny. Um, 
I, and it's funny thing is, it's like coming home to the church. Because 10 years ago, I was a Mac person, and then I went to PC. So I'm back, and it's, but it's, it's a perfect example. If you don't know what you're doing in, in social networking, no amount of all the tools in the world is going to help you. So I, I keep hitting the right side of my new mouse on my Mac, and nothing freaking happens, OK? Because there is no right side of the mouse. And no matter how hard I hit it, nothing is going to happen. I have to train myself to understand that it's the same thing. And that's where we are with social media. What is Facebook? Facebook, for lack of a better word, is the ultimate connector. It is the ultimate way to get in touch with everyone else you've ever known in your life, or more importantly, who you want to know. And I'll bring that to a better example. MySpace, I don't recommend. OK, how many of you have kids? Remember about a year and a half ago, you could not get them off MySpace? They were on MySpace 24 hours a day. Now, want to appear like the worst parent in the world who will like, your kids will have another reason to never talk to you and think you're uncool? Ask them how MySpace is going. Kids have dropped MySpace in the past six months quicker than third period French. OK, they just don't go on MySpace anymore. Why? Easy, easy reason. Dave actually adopted an adult concept about what MySpace is. In kids' minds, Facebook, MySpace is about getting all the friends you could possibly get, no matter who they are, just the most people to possibly know who you are, no matter who the hell they are. Facebook is about getting a lesser number of people, but who are much more important to you and your circle. OK? That's the number one reason why you want to look at Facebook, and it's not just something that kids should be on. An example of that is I was sitting in um, my office one day, and I get a Facebook friend request. And it was, I was pretty new to Facebook. And I figured, OK, I'll, I'll look at this. And you know who it was? Who's the most recognizable CNBC uh, anchor in the world? Maria. No, well, I didn't say the hottest. Jim Cramer. <laughs> you know Cramer's Mad Money? Jim Cramer and I have worked together in the past on a couple of things. He's on Facebook. He asked to be my friend on Facebook. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking, huh, I know he's not in high school. A couple of days later, Ted Leonsis, then Steve Case, then Ariana Huffington. All these people who you don't really associate with hanging out in team-based chat rooms. Well, yeah, well, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, so so my, my point being is that, is that all of a sudden, I'm noticing more and more, I'm noticing the tipping point over to more and more adults. So I start doing some research, and I start realizing that the reason this is happening is not so much because people go on Facebook to waste time, but people go on Facebook to be seen. Facebook allows you to create a persona that you want to have people see. Another example of how that doesn't work is if I Google. How many of you have taken proactive steps to manage your Google, Google reputation? None of you. How many of you own the domain, your first name plus your last name, sucks.com? How many of you own your company name, sucks.com? The list of companies you sent me earlier, I went and checked. Not one company, their company name plus the word sucks is registered out of everyone who's here tonight. Well, let me rephrase that. It wasn't before I started registering them all. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because we live in a society where six bucks and a computer can screw you and screw you big time. So why do you go on Facebook? Why do you go on LinkedIn? So you can actually have some control of your online reputation. And by having control of that online reputation and by creating a persona online, it's not you being in junior high school. It's allowing you to dictate the way other people, contacts, colleagues, potential clients, friends, see you. OK? Because I guarantee you, I have a friend named Greg Clayman. He has the unfortunate name, he has the unfortunate ability to be named after a porn star. There's a porn director named Greg Clayman with about 244 films under his belt. He's won several awards. His work is quite good. Guess which is the first name that comes up? Greg Clayman, the VP of Wireless at MTV? Or Greg Clayman, the porn star who last year won three Assies? <laughs> That's kind of the way we are. So not for nothing, but I want to have as much control as possible over what people see when they Google me. Because we're in a society now where they, that's how they find you. Their first, how many, I don't know how many of you are single here, but there is basically it's a given um, that your first date, you've gone on your first date long before you've met the person because you've Googled the crap out of them. How many of you Google new employees? Well, for starters, it's illegal, but secondly, you should all be doing it. Okay? No matter how illegal it is, I can guarantee you there's not one company in the world that does not Google potential employees. Um, the, the kids who are in school today are realizing, uh, and slowly but surely, they're realizing that they have no choice but to be aware that everything they do is going to be Googleized. And every, there's a camera on them 24 hours a day. Okay? Had there been a had, had we lived in the age of camera phones back when I was in high school, I'd be doing 20 to life. 
There's not much of a question about that. Okay, we were lucky, we missed that. Kids today don't miss that. Okay, I look at um, people like Michael Richards. Okay, he's probably not gonna be working again anytime soon. Okay, we all know who he is? Kramer from Seinfeld? Okay, okay. the London subway bombings, the, the Madrid subway, the Madrid uh, subway bombings. We, we're living in the age of citizen journalism, okay? You fall down those stairs, I guarantee you there's a camera here somewhere that caught it. And I can get access to it, and I'm gonna post that on YouTube. Okay, go to break.com. Break.com is a video, uh, video repository of kids doing stupid things. Mostly, you know, pretty much anything that make you go, make you laugh and make you go, ooh, that must have hurt. 90% of the top of the top watched videos are people running into things, or falling off of things, or somehow doing things that are so painful that you just have to watch them over and over and over again. One of them for the longest time was a woman working in a, in a liquor store, and her associate had pulled up the floor, basement floor thing, uh, to, to go and get something, and she didn't know this and took a step and just wham! And it, 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 oh God, it hurt so much that I must have watched it 40 times. Okay, <laughs> that's the kind of thing we're in right now. So you want to be able to have some control over that. Facebook, um, and Facebook much more than LinkedIn, allows you to do that. And here's why, and here's how. Facebook gives you the ability to put as much or as little information as you want about yourself. If you go onto my Facebook page and you look, what you'll find is photos of everything ranging from me at various corporate events to me speaking, my, my headshot, my, my cover shot on Facebook is me on Fox News, is me doing Fox News. Uh, it's, it's a screen, screen grab from that. So the first thing is, says, wow, okay, he's obviously done Fox News, let's learn a little bit more about him. Here's my profile. You see traditional business stuff, you see client names, you see, you know, stuff that you'd want to see, but then you can get that from anyone. I can find that about you or you or you. Scroll down a little more and you become, I become in your eyes, humanized. Okay, because the more you look, then you start to see, oh cool, he has two cats. My God, they're fat. Okay, then you start to see, oh, geez, he jumps out of an airplane, to, he's a skydiver for fun? What the hell's wrong with him? Wow, he must, I guess he must be really creative. Oh wow, here's a link to a podcast about his book. That's kind of interesting, I guess he wrote a book. I should go check that out on Amazon. Oh wow, look at, look at some, wow, look at some of his friends. Look at all these famous people who want to be his friend. He plays Scrabble. That might be the only questionable thing, because if you're on Facebook and you're, you're playing Scrabblicious, that thing's a freaking time sucker. It'll destroy your life, it's like crack. But, that being said, these are the kind of things that, that are on my Facebook page. These are what I want clients, potential clients, employees, whatever the case may be, to know. I want them to see that I'm not just a, a, a name on a piece of paper or a resume. More importantly, I'm not a stuffed shirt. I'm not gonna bore the hell out of them, okay? And quite frankly, I don't care if you work for a creative shop or if you work for Merrill Lynch or if you work for any corporate company that, that you know, may or may not see the light on this. The fact of the matter is, is that when I'm scrolling down a list of people that I wanna hire, I'm going to look past their name. And I'm going to look past their resume, I'm going to look past what they've done. And, and we're, we're living in a society now where more and more, we live what's called on the social grid. Okay, from the second we wake up until the second we go to bed, we are on the social grid. How we manage that social grid is going to determine how our reputations are stayed. Okay, and the best example I'm going to give you of that, within 24 months, Okay, um, I've said this before, I'm gonna go on record, we're, we're in May of 08 right now. By May 010, by May 010, I guess by May 10. By May 10, okay, you're gonna wake up, some device in your apartment, other than your computer, is gonna have an IP address. Maybe it's your clock radio, maybe it's your shower, whatever, maybe it's your coffee maker. You're gonna get up, something's gonna be activated by you shutting off that alarm clock. Okay, that's gonna, that IP address is gonna in turn talk to your coffee maker, it's gonna make your coffee. You're going to LA that day on business, okay? Um, your tickets are going to be printed out that, that morning, they're going to be waiting for you, you're going to pick them up as you're leaving the house. When you leave the house and your phone is no longer in Bluetooth range of your front door, your front door will lock, okay? You will walk into your car, you'll drive to the airport. When you get into the airport and get on the plane and shut off your, when you check in, the system that checks you in will update your social grid and say, hey, Peter just checked in for his flight to LA. It will alert the people on your social grid in and around Los Angeles. When you shut your phone down, you will send that, it'll send the message, Peter's on the plane to LA, we'll be back on the grid in five hours. You land in LA, it updates you with what's going on in the world, in your own social grid, with your friends, whatever the case may be, in the five hours that you missed, as it's downloading your email, as you're walking to your rental car, it says, hey Peter, I noticed that you're, you know, you're now in LA, your GPS phone just activated, and, you know, everyone's alerted to where you are. Hey, FYI, three of your friends are having dinner at Hannah Sushi on Melrose tonight. You might want to check them out. That place was voted, not by the New York Times as best sushi, but that place was voted by the people who you trust for restaurant recommendations in your circle as the best place. 
So it's no longer about trusting mass media, it's about trusting the people to you that care. P.S. By the way, Peter, I noticed that out of those three people that voted at Best Place, one of them is going there. Uh, he works for company XYZ that your company does business with. Do you want me to send him a text to see if he has room for one more? Okay, that's where we're going. And it's, this is not unheard of. There are services out there that already do this. The only difference is they all haven't connected yet. They're all going to be in, and I, I hate to go on a limb here, but I'm going to go, they're all going to be in the Googleplex within two years. And when they're in the Googleplex, that's, that's where we're going to be. So why not have control over that? You want to be able to show, you know, not, I, I doubt any of, you, any of you in the audience right now think that you're a moron, okay? I doubt that you think you're boring. I doubt that you think you're very, you know, staid and laid back and that you don't do anything. But yet, your online personas, using social networking, probably show that. Because if you're on LinkedIn right now, awesome, I'm going to have dinner with the resume guy. That, that doesn't do it. And, and it's not going to do it for your company, and it's not going to do it for your business. So the key is... As we continue to grow, and as the social net continues to grow, how do you take advantage of it? In a couple ways. I talked about Facebook. There are, there are tons and tons of, um, there are tons and tons of case studies showing how social media um, can make money for your company. And I want to touch on that, because how many of you have to go back and pitch this to your boss? Okay, and convince your boss that this exists. Absolutely none of you. So you're all here just for the drinks? What? <laughs> okay, so you're independent. So you basically have to pitch this to your, hey, your, own, your own bosses. You have to, you have to be, I have to convince you then that this is worthwhile. Put it that way. Okay. Here's what I look at. I'm an independent as well, and the clients that I have find me strictly by word of mouth or online. And when people do go to find me online, I tell them to look either at my personal website. How many people blog? One, two, good. A good number of people. All of you should be blogging. And it's the easiest thing in the world to do. And you don't have to be brilliant about it. And you don't need a million people to do it. And we'll touch on that in about two seconds, because that's, if, if you don't go on Facebook because you're too scared, at least start a blog. So you should be looking at Facebook and looking at online media as a way to sort of go out there and promote your brand online to a very wide audience so that people can find you. Because the fact of the matter is, everyone's Googling now. It's not about paying for search engine placement or anything like that. People will find you. If they say, oh, go talk to Peter Shankland. He's really good at that. They'll go Google you. So you don't have to pay for search engine placement if people are searching on your name. Okay, that's kind of not important. I'm not, I'm not dissing, dissing SEO. There's a huge place in the world for SEO, which is search engine optimization. But if a lot of you are independents and a lot of you are working word of mouth, and people are saying, hey, where'd you have that great fill in the blank here? Done. Who did it for you? Oh, go call Chuck. Well, in order to find Chuck, they're going to Google you. And the first four or five things that come up on Google are going to determine whether or not they want to pursue and make that call. First thing that comes up when you Google me is my blog. My blog has everything from comments on the PR industry all the way to skydiving videos, all the way to, I have a, a category called stupid things that travelers do, um, where I take pictures or video of, of, of travelers doing idiot things. Um, I, cause, you know, cause that amuses me. Um, or tales of idiocy from the TSA. Uh, you ever try taking a sport rig parachute through the uh, TSA security at Newark? <laughs> yeah. So these are the kind of things that I, that I blog about. And people see that and they get some idea of my sense of humor and they get some idea of the way I work. Okay. That has served me really well. So look at blogging, look at having a, a website, a personal website that tells more than just here's my company, here are my rates, here's what I do. You, people need to know more about you to feel comfortable about you. In this day and age, when they can find five people online and they all look the same, they're going to go to the guy who has a picture of his cat. It's, it's, not, it, it's proven over and over and over again, and that in turn is going to generate business. Okay, and it's going to generate a lot of business, because it's the people who have that connection. You might find a cat lover, you might find someone who runs marathons, whatever it is. These are the connections that people don't think about when they think about putting stuff online. They think, okay, I have a blog. Twice a week, I will comment on the industry and the state of it. That's lovely. That, that real, that's just, that's special. Okay? But that's not all that it should be. That's good. It proves that you're intelligent. It proves you know what the hell you're talking about in this industry. But there has to be more than that. Because when that, when, if that's it, that's no better than a LinkedIn profile. Because all that is is a resume. It shows that you know the space. That's great. But I want someone, especially, how many of us are in creative industries? I want someone who's going to be a little more creative than just, yes, I know my industry. Okay, the skydiving thing and the running thing and the cat thing has got me a ton of work. Because people think, okay, he's a little weird. We kind of need that. He's a lot weird. He's a freaking lunatic. That's fine. Let me have, you know, I'll take that. So look at that. That's a way to get your brand out there. And really, all social networking is, is getting your brand out there. But the beauty of it is that social networking allows you to get your brand out there in a helpful way. 
again, back to that whole, we live in that me, me, me society. Um, one of the things that, that I've always found is that people will tend to remember you um, mostly because they'll think you're incredibly strange if you go and help them with something and don't ask for anything in return. And there's no better way to do that than through social media. Um, how many of you could run a mailing list? How many of you have information you could probably share with people? And how many of you have people that always ask you the same thing? Okay, people that always ask, oh, you know what? Call Mark. He knows about that. Right? Or call whoever. That's, that's really their area of expertise. And so you give that information freely because you're, nice, you're a nice person and you want to do it. Okay, so here's the problem. Why are you just waiting for people to come to you to give that information? If you could push that information out and become the leader in whatever topic that is and get recognized for that and get recognized for giving it out there just because you're a nice person, the, forget the, just the good karma that'll come your way, the business leads and the business results that'll come your way are huge. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. I know a lot of people, mostly because if you're sitting next to me on a plane, God, God help you, you're going to know me at the end of the flight. Okay, so I got really bored, and from all the people that I knew, started the company, because uh, I'd always sit next to the, the I always sit next to the nice person, but he'd be really nice while the, the supermodel, the really hot one, was four rows behind me, and, and she was never sitting next to me, and that just really, after 400 flights, can piss you off, something fierce. Um, so it occurred to me that we have control over everything we do on the airplane, except who we sit next to. Right? So I launched a social networking site that, much like a dating site, lets you choose the person you want to sit next to based on their profile. You can enter your information, enter your flight, the system then matches you and says, hey, there are 12 people on this flight who have entered this information, do you want to meet them? Okay? No one had ever done it before, which is kind of why I did it, because that's like, that's the fun of it. So I started this thing, the media went crazy over it, because every reporter's been in that situation. You're the reporter from CNN, and you have five hours next to them in this little tin tube. So 40,000 paying members later, I sold the site to um, a bunch of private investors. The purpose behind it was to connect people. And then I became that guy who connected people. From that, reporters started calling me and said, hey, you know, you, you knew a lot of people and I needed this and that. Do you know someone who knows about 18th century art? Do you know someone who knows about whatever the case may be? And I'd go through my Rolodex and I'd say, oh, yeah, you know, Mike knows about that. And I'd, I'd put the two of them together. And it occurred to me that it was taking a lot of freaking time to do that. Okay, so it occurred to me, why can't I have them come to me? And, and to get, this brings it back to what I said about offering whatever experience you have out there and becoming the hero. The key really is to become a hero. I created uh, a Facebook group, you know, because of all, those, all that, that kid stuff you see on Facebook. I created a Facebook group for professionals called Help Out a Reporter. And it was basically, it allowed you to post, um, reporters could email me and say, hey, I have a query. I'm looking for someone who knows about 18th century art. I would then send that out to anyone in my group and say, hey, there's a reporter looking for information about 18th century art. Um, who do you know? And sure enough, someone in my group would know about it or know someone who would. They would either get the story and become the source and get quoted in the paper, or they'd forward it on. If they forwarded it on, they look like a hero. If they got the story, I look like a hero. If it had something to do with a client of mine, it never even made the list. Okay? So you see where this is going. The list became, it, it, it blew up from one person to 1,200 people in about a month. Facebook caps the number of users you can have, that you can send an email to in any group of 1,200 people. I was just going to leave it there. And then, um, how many of you know PR Newswire? How many of you know PR Newswire's thing called ProfNet? But ProfNet is, is basically what I was doing, but you pay like six grand a year for it. ProfNet called me and said, hey, we think you're stealing our leads. And I said, how, 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 am I, how am I doing that? And they said, well, you posted a lead in your helper reporter group that's the same lead that we posted on ProfNet. Like, so if a reporter gives it to me and gives it to you, how am I stealing your leads? In fact, you could be stealing my leads. Now, it turns out ProfNet has no sense of humor. So, um, so they threatened to sue me and all that, and I'm just like, well, I have more, much more free time than you, so if, if that's what you want to do, let, you know, let's, let's play. And so, of course, I went out right out and bought helpreporter.com. And helpreporter.com is now at over 8,000 members, getting approximately 30 to 40 queries a day from journalists. It takes me roughly 30 minutes a day to send out three emails, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, once in the evening, uh, to about 8,000 PR people, small business owners, uh, consultants, all of whom receive my emails, and if they can help a reporter out, they email the reporter immediately. I try to give them PR tips, you know, hey, here's, here's how to not look like an idiot, uh, here's how to do this better, here's how to not spam a reporter. Um, my, my sources, my 8,000 sources, have been quoted in everything from the Wall Street Journal to the LA Times to the New York Times to CNN to uh, the Today Show, um, and hundreds of others in the middle. Um, I know there are at least a few people in this room who are, who are members of Harrow. Um, what do I get out of this? 
okay? Well, for starters, I get 8,000 people who I can type whatever the hell I want to. Every harrow I send has about three paragraphs of me before I get to the queries. Tonight, they were all about the, uh, all about the, um, the event tonight. Uh, this morning, they were all about the great skydives I had over the weekend, okay? There are, uh, I mentioned that I had cats. Do you have any idea how many people rep cat product out there that I've gotten sent to me? I have more freaking cat products in my apartment now than I know what I'm going to do with. People are shocked when you do something nice and don't ask for anything in return. I'm not making any money on this. As a matter of fact, it's cost me a couple of days to set the thing up. It's been worth everything. The media that Harrow has gotten, first of all, think about it. I'm dealing with reporters and sources. The media loves this as a story. They've written about it countless times. What's going to wind up happening is it's going to get a lot bigger, and eventually it might most likely be bought. Okay? Because I'd say a database of 30 or 40 or 50,000 publicists and small businesses is probably pretty good for a company like BusinessWire or something like that, right? It's one of, those, one of those ideas that cost me a little money in the beginning, and people think, why the hell is he doing this? What does he want out of this? What's he getting from this? But then they realize it's nothing. The thank yous I get are, are, are beyond compare. And for me, I'm all about the good karma. When you, when you deliberately plunge yourself to the earth from a plane several times a day, it's, you're kind of all about the good karma. But, but more than that, I like the fact that I can help people and that I can connect people. What happens from that? People email me and say, hey, you know what? You did this really great thing. Can you speak to our corporation about social media? Uh, we can pay you this. Or can you come uh, talk to us and sell your book? Or can you, hey, we, we saw what you did with Howe and did a really great job of that, and then we read about it in the paper. Can you do the same thing for our company? We just fired our PR firm because they didn't get it. Okay? It's paid me back in spades. That's social media. And that's no more different than traditional networking, but it's online. And why is it social media? Because I'm using the power of the masses. Basically, I'm a fat guy in an apartment with two fat cats that's bringing PR Newswire to its knees. Okay? Off of one, well now, Macintosh. Okay? Because I thought it would be fun. Social media gives us the power to go out there and explore that. And that's something you could never do prior to any of this. You could have a website. Back in 1999, I have a website. I have, I have a picture of an email thing. You click it, you can send me an email. And we've kind of moved past that. Okay? But we've moved past that into a realm where people expect you to have an online profile and an online persona that shows more about you than they can find out by, bless you, by Googling you or by looking you up. Because the fact of the matter is, they're either going to find out something that you didn't place there, or they're going to find out something that you did. Which one do you want? Either way, they're going to Google you. Either way, they're going to go online and look for you. Which one do you want to be seen? I'll give you an example of that. How many of you ever heard of something called JDate? OK. How many of you ever used JDate? Or Match.com. How many of you know? You know, you know, you know the answer. It's cool. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I met my last girlfriend on J Date, and we would tell people that we met in Crystal Meth Rehab because it was a lot less embarrassing. But <laughs> so there's a great story that I broke on my blog about two years ago. Um, J Date, for those who don't know, is Match.com for Jews. Um, a guy named Darren Sherman. Anybody know the, 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 the sad, sad tale of Darren Sherman? Darren Sherman went on to J Date, and he. <laughs> He met a woman named uh, Joanne, and they went to dinner and had a lovely time. And he said, hey, I'd love to see you again. And she said, great. And so he paid for dinner. And they were going to talk in a couple of days to make plans. Later, you know, for next week. Well, Darren wound up, or Joanne wound up having to go out of town. <clears throat> emergency meeting, emergency business. And she had no email. She was actually out of the country. Darren emails her and, of course, gets no response because she's out of the country. About four days goes by. She's still out of the country. He sends her an email. Obviously, you... Uh, uh, weren't serious about wanting to see me again, and I paid dinner under false pretenses. Therefore, please remit $50 for your portion of the dinner at Blue Water Grill to my address. Here's my address. Okay. Yeah, I know. There weren't, there weren't keys on my keyboard big enough to type WTF when I read this. So, so she gets no response, you know, because she's not there. And um, the story continues. Darren, Darren tries again. Because obviously I was used, you, his, he became the, the great quote was, you ate the food, you drank the wine, now pay your bill. Um, anyway, long story short, he, 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 he sent her, a, started sending her voicemails, follow-up voicemails, I'm going to sue you, don't make me take you to small claims court, I don't want to have to file this, I don't want to have to call your, your employment, blah, blah. She finally gets back into town. She looks at her email, she's like, are you kidding me? Listen, looks at all the voicemails, basically says, you know, look, you're in, obviously a schmuck, there's no way in hell I'm, I'm going to date you again, and I was out of town. And so she sends it to her best friend, who just happens to be a really good friend of mine, and who knows that I blog. 
She said, Peter, you want something? You want this story? You want to break this in your blog? I said, well, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it simply to teach people how to, you know, that, that things online will always stay online. I'd never do it to like, because it's really, really funny and he's a schmuck. Um, and of course, she sends me the voicemails, which are all digital. And I blog it, and I call it How Not to Act on J-Date. Um, about 30 minutes after I blog it, it's picked up by a website called Gawker. Gawker is like uh, page six, the online page six. Um, about an hour after that, the New York Post calls me for the real page six and says, hey, we're going to run this tomorrow. Can we link to your blog? Sure. Uh, two days later, Ellen Gatman in the Wall Street Journal says, hey, I finally decided to do a story on uh, how your online reputation could track you forever. Do you have contact info for Daryl Sherman? I said, well, no, I don't, but I'm sure if you do a story, you can, you can find him. Um, long story short, Darren Darren used to sue me. He tries to sue me for slander and libel, and I went, dude, I, I'm quoting you. <laughs> you know, um, end result, uh, the story was ran for about two months. Um, it was pretty much at the top of all the search engines. Uh, if you actually go onto Google right now and type in JDate, the first thing that comes up is this site for JDate, and the second thing that comes up is my blog. Um, this was 2006. Darren Sherman has since moved to Washington, D.C. and changed his name to Darren Kamowitz. Do you want to find that, or do you want to go out and create a freaking profile that's yours? Do the math. I'm not, sit, you know, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here preaching Facebook or preaching LinkedIn or preaching any of these things because I think they're really cool and neat and nifty, you know, and because you get to like throw sheep at people. And, and that, I'm doing that because that's where we're going. And your options are do it and have some control over what's out there, or don't do it and don't complain when the porn star who has the same name as you gets a much higher ranking than you do. It, that's really what it comes down to. Um, there are several ways to do it. You don't, and by the way, you don't have to create a Facebook profile. That there, there are things on Facebook that I would rather not be on there. Okay, there are things on Facebook like called um, Super Poke that allows you to throw a sheep at someone. If any of my professional contacts on, Super, on, on Facebook ever throw a sheep at me, they're no longer in my professional contacts. But on the same note, the people that you want in your contacts know better than to throw a sheep at you. Okay, they know they they can, however, buy you a virtual beer. All right, it's one of the cheesiest things. It's been around for 15 years, but it's still pretty freaking cool when someone buys me a virtual beer. Okay, those are the kind of things that say, hey, you know what? I am professional, but I also know there's fun to be had. And they understand that line. And that's what you're learning. You're learning that line to differentiate yourself between everyone else who either doesn't get it or doesn't want to get it. Um, it's great. I, I don't have kids, but I can tell you that I freaked out when my parents went on Facebook. Go on Facebook and friend your children. It'll, it'll freak the crap out of them. It's the coolest thing. Has anyone done that? Yeah, of course Steve has, right? You wonder why your kids don't talk to you. you um, it's those kind of things that, you know, you, 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 Facebook has changed from, more and more I'm seeing people um, have the same sort of opinion that you all did when we sat down here, which was that I'd never use it, it's, it's for kids, it has a bad reputation. I don't know where that drug connotation of it, once you're on it, you can never get off it. It's, it's really, you can quit it, it's not like crack. Um, I mean, it kind of is, but it's, it is quittable. Um, but it's not, it's not necessarily that you can never get off it. It's that, again, you can put up a Facebook profile and then never have to go back to it. Put up something that you, you're comfortable with being the first Google rank that comes up under your name, and then leave it. But what you find is that other professional people in your industry are going to look for it and say, oh, she's on Facebook, cool, I'll add her. All of a sudden, you have 75 people in your network, all of whom are in your profession, all of whom you can be doing business with, and all of whom you can email through Facebook on a Tuesday and say, hey, I'm putting together a little gathering on Thursday night. I'm why don't you all come down for a drink? Then all of a sudden, you're that person. You're that person who creates that group. And, and all the people come to and want to be in because everyone connects there. Okay, I never, I never started out intending to be that person. I swear to God, I didn't. And now for whatever reason, I have over 2,600 Facebook friends. And it's ridiculous. And, I, 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 and the scary thing is I've probably met a good 90% of them. Because when I go to different cities now, I post on Help a Reporter, hey, yeah, I'm in Denver tonight, and someone will easily call me and say, oh my god, let's have a little gathering. And I'll be at a bar, and like there will be 65 people in that city, and they'll all come to meet me. Not because I'm that great, because I really kind of don't think I am. I mean, I, I have the, it's the eyes, but it has to be something about the fact that people really, they, people like to be connected to connectors. Okay? When you were in school, okay, there were like five or six cool kids there. They were the ones who everyone wanted to be friends with. They might have been the stupidest kids in the world, but they were smart enough to realize that for whatever reason, people were connecting to them. There's no reason you can't be that. Okay, and again, that goes back to traditional networking, which if you suck at, all the Facebooks in the world won't help you. So work on traditional networking. Work on the concept of, hey, it's not about what can I get from this, but what can I give? Because that comes back. Go. The possibility of, of being sabotaged. 
you put up the best face you think you can, but someone else who's got a grudge decides, ah, oh, he's on Facebook, and all of a sudden your reputation How? isn't the way. Well, I, I don't know about it. This yeah. Is what I'm asking. Well, what's your what's your name? This is, I'm Harvey. What's your last name? I'm not telling. You. <laughs> <laughs> so you <laughs> something good. <laughs> Yeah, you, every, you got every penny out of this. You should have gotten out of this. <laughs> That's the key, okay, is, is the fact of the matter is you take those steps, those, those, those beginners. First of all, love, sex, money, and God are not good passwords. If you're using them right now, change them. That's number one. Okay, now that we've gotten through that, those are the top four, um, top four most used passwords, by the way. Um, there's a great line uh, in some movie where, where the uh, t technology guy is called in because someone hacked into the mainframe. And she said, well, how is this supposed to happen? And he said, because you didn't read my memo on the top four passwords being love, sex, money, and God, so would her holiness mind changing her password? Um, so it basically comes down to that. So you want to you have something obviously hack-proof, letters and numbers. But more importantly than that, if you're creating an online presence, okay, as you're building that online presence, that page, that, that, that Facebook page, that blog, whatever it is, is being accessed every day. And every time it's accessed, Google sees the changes, and links, your links get higher and higher. If someone has a grudge against you, they will have a hell of a lot easier time putting up your name sucks.com and getting that higher in the rankings if you don't have anything. Okay, if you have your own page, you've already started it. And it links back to you and other people are linking to you and they see Google's very smart like that and it sees that it's coming from other people. Google doesn't base its rankings on how cool you think you are. Google bases people are linking to you. Thereby how cool other people think you are. Classic PR versus advertising equation. If I, if I walk into a bar and I go up to a woman and go, hey, I'm really great in bed, you should come home with me, I'm gonna get a drink thrown in my face. If I walk into a bar and her best friend goes up to her and says, oh my god, that guy's great in bed, chances are I'm going home with her. That's PR, that's how Google works. Google thinks, hey, if a million people are linking to him, he must be popular, let's, make, let's raise his rankings. So if you don't have anything out there, and someone puts up yournamesucks.com and gets three people linked to them, guess what, they're 300% they're, they're better than you because you have nothing. So I would say that it's not so much it's not so much sabotage if you do something, it's much more sabotage if you don't. I'll go into one well, let me go into one other concept of, of social media and then I will uh, start I'll move to questions because I want to talk about one more quick thing. Who here has heard of um, the worst kind of crack in the world that's called Twitter? Okay. Twitter, uh, for lack of a better word, is microblogging. If you're if you're too afraid to start a blog. Okay, or if you don't have the time or whatever, Twitter is 160 character blogs. Okay, and the reason it's 160 characters, anybody know why? Because it's text and mobile based. Twitter allows you to answer the question of what are you doing from wherever the hell you might be. Okay, you're at the ball game. Just watched Rivera hit a three-run homer from the fifth row at Yankee Stadium, and you Twitter that, and it goes out to your friends. Your friends can be corporate, professional, personal, whatever. Um, I recommend checking it out only because it's a great way to get into it without having to really dedicate the time needed to start a blog or dedicating the time needed to um, really build something. Like everything else that's cool on the internet, it's free. Um, it's at twitter.com, T-W-I-T-T-E-R.com. As a matter of fact, when you're on Twitter um, and you want your first friend, add me. My name is Skydiver. So I'm twitter.com slash skydiver. You don't need to have a cool dorky name like that. You can have twitter.com slash Sarah Morgan or slash Peter Shankman or whatever. It doesn't matter. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to easily create fans of you. And the reason it does that is because whatever you're twittering, there are ways to track. You can track any word on Twitter. So I, can, I track all my client names. I track the word skydive. I track the word marathon running. Whatever I want to track, I can track. And what happens then is when I find someone using that word, where, whoever they are, I might add them to my friends list, where I might get updates whenever they tweet something. Okay, so if you're tweeting something interesting, hey, just finish a 10K around the park, perfect example. I, I track the term President's Club because of how much I travel. Every time I'm in the President's Club or in the airport, I turn that track on or I just leave it on. And if I said, hey, I'm in the President's Club at Newark, you know, Terminal 3, and someone else says that, I'm like, I look around. Wow, someone else in the same club that I am. Twitter has a couple million members. Chances are pretty good. I've met three people this way, one of whom wound up giving me a business, and I'm handling their PR. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's a great way to kill time. If you have a BlackBerry or a cell phone, um, you can do it when you have time to kill. It's not very intrusive. It's, it's called the disruptive technology. Don't let that scare you. It's not disruptive at all. Um, you can even track it from your computer so you don't have to be um, bombarded with the occasional text message. But it's worth looking into because it's a great way to sort of get into the blogosphere and get into the social media sphere without having to devote a lot of time to uh, a blog 
So if I had to leave you with what to do tomorrow or tonight when you get home, open up a Facebook page. It's not difficult. You don't need to do a lot of stuff. Okay, you really can do it quickly. And you don't need to add, you know, 54 million things, all, the majority of which are juvenile. You know, put up a photo of yourself. Put up a photo of your pet. Something fun that gives people a little more background than just your LinkedIn profile. Okay, because that's where we are. And that will immediately start your online reputation for, for building. And you can add to it. And believe me, I guarantee you, within a week, you will have friends that have found you that you may have connected with two days ago or that you may have not connected with for 20 years who will find you on Facebook. Apparently, my father, uh, some, some woman who was his first college girlfriend, um, uh, 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 found him on Facebook. And, and then it came out, apparently, that he was, it was his first college girlfriend like um, during one of the several times that he broke up with my mom before getting married to her. <laughs> That made for really interesting dinner fodder the other night. Um, so, you know, I guarantee you people will find you. It's, it's being used more and more. Um, look at Twitter. If you want info on blogging, you know, talk to me about that. I'll give you some ideas. My websites are really easy. They're shankman.com is my personal website. I encourage you to join Help a Reporter. Um, if for no other reason, then it's, it's an easy way to get you guys famous. Okay? It can't hurt. It can only help. And, you know, and I'm, I'm incredibly funny three times a day. You know, what more? Um, but so, so there's those kind of things. But more importantly, um, you know, what it really comes down to, it comes down to being, you know, it could, what we talked about in the beginning, that, that one-tenth of a one-percent better than the fat ass who won't get out of his car to get the food, that's where we are in this society. So, so a Facebook page, if you work with people who think the same way as you did when you came in here, which is, oh, I'd never use that, no, that's, the, then just by building the page puts you a step ahead of them. Okay, the Twitter page puts you a step ahead of them. It's, do me, one last thing to do, and then I'll stop for questions. Um, everybody take out a business card and hold it up. No, chop, chop, we're in your time. Take your business card and hold it up. Just hold it up. Hold it up. There you go. Good. Okay. You know what I see? I see, um, I see about 40 or so, two and a quarter inch by one and one eighth inch pieces of paper. Okay? Um, which is great. You can put your cards down now. Cool. That's, that's, that's great. That's, that's very traditional and very, and very normal. Um, I guarantee you I'm going to out of those cards. And I'm going to try really, really hard to remember the person associated with the card. But because all those cards are exactly the same size and tend to look the same, it's going to be very, very difficult. If we're all in creative industries, and if the majority of us, are, as you said, are consultants who really don't have to report to anyone, I ask you, why is your business card the same standard as the business cards from the world's most boring companies? So I think I just to think about that. We'll move to question in a second. By the way, here's mine. $100 poker chip. People tend to remember this one. And it sounds really cool. It sounds like a poker chip. It has that like little click, clack, click, clack, clack thing that you hear when you go to Vegas. People tend to remember this. It's not so much that it's this really, really cool thing, but you're going to say, oh, that's kind of really cool. Let me have one. And you're going to remember the guy who gave it to you because it was the weird guy who had the poker chip as a business card. That's, that's a, a, a metaphor for everything we've talked about tonight. There's no reason not to do that. So I'll turn it to questions, um, if you want to do questions here, I guess, and then we'll do a real questions here, and then I'm happy to go downstairs and you can all buy me a Diet Coke and we'll talk more. Yeah. Wait for Mike. Oh, wait for Mike. Wait for Mike. Okay, now you can talk. Since there is millions of blogs out there, you start a blog, how do you um, get traffic to it? Yep. How does anyone even know you have one? Well, you have, you have clients, right? Yep. Okay, you communicate with them on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. Tell them you have a blog. That's number one. That will bring you your clients at first, okay? Then it comes down to actually writing something interesting. My blog I had for three years would get occasional spikes of traffic when I wrote something interesting. Most of the time it's flatline. My flatline, granted, is about 2,000 people visiting a day. But if you start off with your clients and post some interesting stuff, maybe there's tidbits that, you know, there are so many things on the web that you can find out, like every day. I had no idea that last, actually, you're the only other one, Steve is the only other person who knew this. Last week sometime I posted a, a Harrow, my Harrow emails and it went out and it was, I titled it, you know, the, the Afternoon Queries, Oh, the Humanity Edition. And the reason I put it that is because I happened to read somewhere that it was the 70th anniversary of the Hindenburg. Who the hell knew that? Okay, but I happened to find it online. Talk about that. Talk about these things that other people wouldn't know that somehow makes them smarter. Because then they go and they look a lot better at cocktail parties. And they will love you for getting that information from them. Okay, and there are tons of places online to find this stuff out and then just expand on it. And then all of a sudden you have loyal people that are going to come back and visit because they want to be thought of as that smart guy when they go to their parties. They don't have to tell you where they got it from. And they want to tell people, and that's how the information says. You don't need, the majority of blogs out there have two readers. One is the blog administrator, and the other is the person that wrote it. 
Okay, <laughs> honest to God. So you don't have to have more than that. But the fact of the matter is, there are about, I'd say about 30 blogs that I peruse on a daily basis because I find the content really, really interesting. They're not professional blogs, they're regular people. Two of whom are in this room. They're just regular, regular people, and they write these blogs. And I'm interested in their life. They have interesting stuff to talk about. And they, they have great links. Sometimes, sometimes I'll put links up to the most random of stuff. I'll put links on my blog to, to uh, YouTube videos of country singers just because I think the song is funny. You know, and sure enough, there are people with my really weird sense of humor out there who get a kick out of that. And so they like looking at the kind of stuff that I see to determine what they can laugh at today or what they can then forward to their friend. Become that person that offers them that fodder, and they will return. But here's, the, here's the, the, the other flip side of that. Intermix that with a lot of actual business stuff that helps them out. You change the blog every day? Um, no. No, shankman.com gets updated probably two or three times a week, if, it, if that. You know, I, look at my ADD. Do you think I set things on the schedule? You know, it's... <laughs> I, if, if I'm remembering, the greatest thing I ever bought was this $59 a month unlimited wire, uh, Wi-Fi card, um, uh, Sprint mobile card. I, can, I, I spent an hour on the, on the train down here from New York putting all this stuff online. You can do that uh, from anywhere. You know, carry your laptop with you, carry a wireless card, update from the Starbucks, update from the park. You know, we're getting into some nice weather. Take the laptop with you when you go to the park to watch the kids play soccer and just write. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to post enough stuff to, to, to change, change your life, but get a couple of followers. I guarantee you, by the time you have a week's worth of followers, they're gonna, and you don't post for a week, they're going to email you going, you know, dude, what the hell? It's the greatest feeling in the world. No, oh, no, no, that's stuff that you get for freely. I don't pay for it. Yeah, by all means, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, there was someone in the back who had a question to that. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Like, 